Okay, let's take a look at texture atlases. And uh, if you're not familiar with those, they are like sprite sheets. But uh, what Xcode does is it basically just takes uh, images inside of a folder that we create and uh, packages that up as a, at a, as a sprite kit at uh, runtime. So it's incredibly easy. And all we have to do is create a folder, which I've already done here, and you just put .atlas at the end. I'm just going to unfold this and show you what I've already got inside of it. Uh, I've got uh, exported images of the character jumping, jumping, just the jump frames though, and I've got my regular SD or non-retina display versions. Okay, so here he is. And then uh, at exactly double that size, I've got the at 2x or the retina display versions. And all you need to do is just put that uh, at symbol and then 2x on the uh, same named image as the original one. And uh, X, Xcode will know to swap that out um, for the, uh, the retina display devices. So uh, we've got now six files in this one folder uh, for three images essentially, or three textures. And again, all you have to do is put .atlas at the end of this. And I'm going to go over and go to Add Files. And if your computer is as slow as mine is this morning, you'll see the spinning wheel. There we go. OK, so uh, we're going to break it files. And we want character atlas. Uh, all these settings are fine over here. Just click on Add. And uh, one neat thing about this, which I'll just test really quickly, is this will update um, whenever I put new folder, new files into this folder. So, for example, uh, let's go and put in here this uh, character base, these two images, and. Keep in mind that just dumping them into this one is not the same as this folder anymore because this got copied into the project. So an easy way to, to get to it is you go to Show and Finder. And here it is. Okay, so just to test things out, let me copy those into there. Okay, and then sure enough, they are magically imported in here. Um, I don't. Um, I don't want those in there though. I'm gonna take them out. Because those we're gonna put into our um, just regular image assets, which I guess I didn't do before. So let's go ahead and do that now, and I'll explain why that is. And to do so, I will uh, come over here to Flash one more time. So take a look at the size differences between this is our oops, this is our base character here. Add on a little bit for the shadow and um, this guy up at the top, which would be the the tallest version of uh, this texture. Uh, even with this and the shadow combined, it's it's still maybe 20 or 30 pixels um, shorter than uh, this guy. And I just find it's easier uh, with textures when you're changing the texture on a, uh, a sprite to keep everything, all the source images, the same exact size. Uh, because what can happen, and let me just go ahead and just create a new file here. And I'll go back and actually, instead of that, let's just use our source images. We'll dump them in here real quick. All right, so here is the tallest one of our character jumping. And let's bring in our base character as well. All right, so let's just draw a little square around this guy. And here we go. Ideally, we want something like this, or I think so, where my base image is this size right here and we wouldn't have to worry about any sort of scaling of the texture when we put when we replace the texture in this image with this one right here okay because everything fits into the same size square uh, what I wouldn't want to have have happen is if my base image 
was like this and then suddenly I've got to deal with this problem where this guy comes in like so right because he's getting squashed to fill in there and um, what I did was uh, I just made sure that my base image was a little bit bigger than what's viewing over here so if you look at well actually I can just do that here in flash because it knows the size of the original image it's one um, it's uh, 86 wide and 112 tall so it accounts for all those other ones now here's the the thing that I noticed with the um, the sprite sheet and uh, or the uh, I'm sorry the uh, the texture uh, atlas is that um, when I brought these images into here and I was using them uh, Xcode created you know the most optimized uh, version it could and it, it took that negative space okay that where there was no pixel data and just figured oh well <laughs> there's nothing there so I'm just gonna you know condense it to be as small as possible and um, so it didn't account for that extra part that I had left in and there's probably some way of fixing that but um, uh, it, whether there is or isn't I still just prefer to uh, take that into account myself and export out images that are all going to be consistent in uh, size and it, it mattered a little bit less because um, you know as soon as this guy was jumping or as soon as this uh, first texture was being used the character was jumping up in the air so I didn't have to worry about some sort of um, you know ground line shift where um, you know because these are images all have their center point in the middle anyway I didn't have to worry about maybe the legs of this next image coming down below where they should have been and that could have been more of an issue right there um, and again it's just not something that I really tested out but I just knew that if I had those textures the same size at least um, I'm uh, good to go there so uh, let's um, let's switch back to Xcode and see if there's anything else we need to mention about um, the uh, character dot atlas again just remember that um, wherever you create your character dot atlas file as soon as you import it into here um, it's probably going to get copied in and that actually was one of the options when you go to add to files whether to copy it into the destination folder uh, generally I just I just always do that because you don't want to have just some you know weird asset folder floating around in your hard drive um, that's being used in the in the project but it's existing outside the project so um, there you go and we're gonna write the code to use the uh, the character atlas uh, shortly enough but um, that's how to get those uh, assets in there and one last thing of uh, utmost importance which I just discovered recently and I don't know why this wasn't an issue the first time I ran through this project but the second time it was um, I was having the, the the texture jump around a little a little bit and that was the, what I feared was gonna happen and I, I checked some of the Apple developer forms and things like that and everybody on there was kind of agreeing that there is a, a known bug since version one and uh, what the main reason most people could come up with it was if the texture atlas decided to rotate one of the images uh, to optimize it then it would introduce this bug where the white space was um, was not being included so uh, the w an easy way around that is to just take a uh, a symbol okay and it could be just a big box like this what I've done is I've uh, taken the transparency down to everything but one percent and uh, that shouldn't be visible in the game but uh, it it is pixel data still the computer considers it that so every one of my frames that I exported out has that in the background and uh, that is now keeping the uh, the texture locked into place and it's not uh, shifting around at all so uh, just keep that in mind and I will go ahead and just include in the uh, the character frames as a dot FLA file if you do want to uh, play around with that and uh, using this method of course uh, now the you don't want to just go export uh, PNG sequence in fact that'll be grayed out because you've selected multiple symbols you do want to go over here to just the regular export and uh, there you go. All right, proceeding on.